What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll show you how to optimize Soul Mask for the best possible performance. A surprising number of people have reached out to me asking me to cover this game, so here I am. Let's do it. Just keep in mind this game is early access, a ton of stuff is going to change, but for the most part, a lot of the settings are already laid out and have everything we need that should stay pretty consistent throughout the development cycle. For the most part, changes that we make here to the options should still have similar impact in the future. Anyways, let's get into it. First of all, firing up into the game and into our own world over here, you can see immediately I'm capped to 60 FPS in the top left. Before we get to any kind of crazy optimization, hit pause, then game settings, followed by video, and scrolling down here, you'll see advanced graphics vSync should be turned off, and the frame rate limit should be lifted all the way up to the max being unlimited if you'd like to see what kind of performance you're getting. Also, while we're here, make sure that at the very top, your display is set to either windowed full screen or full screen for the best, most consistent performance, but on most modern systems, it doesn't really matter between those two. Then your resolution should definitely match your display or at least be compatible, otherwise things will be super blurry or you'll be wasting extra power in frames you don't actually see. Then if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see AMD FSR and Nvidia DLSS. These are both upscaling solutions. Whichever one you choose is based on your preference. And of course, if you have an Nvidia RTX graphics card or not, FSR can be used by absolutely anyone and essentially upscaling runs your game at a lower resolution, then blows it up to full screen using AI, saving you a bunch of performance, getting you way higher FPS, at a very small visual impact cost. This, while AMD FSR is on by default, doesn't actually do much as, scrolling up, you'll see my 3D resolution is set to 100%. I've essentially told my PC to upscale native quality gameplay into 100%, so it's not really doing anything. If you were to crank down resolution to around 80 something-ish percent, this is the same as setting your FSR to around the quality setting, usually. Then around 70% would probably be balanced, and 50% would probably be performance. Anyways, I'll leave this on 100%, and for now, disable any kind of upscaling, so FSR and DLSS, just so we can see what kind of native performance we get in the game. And of course, I'll be opening up a proper more in-depth overlay as such. There we go. So it is a bit hidden away, but you can see I'm getting a solid 83-ish FPS, and this game feels super smooth. This is with everything set to the best highest settings on a 3080 Ti at 2K, so it runs pretty well, or at least on modern hardware. If we change it from very high to high, we move up to around 92-ish FPS, then medium, 117-ish, 120, low, up to 130-ish, and finally, very low, moves our game all the way up to 160-ish FPS, but of course, this is probably aimed at running on a very, very low-powered system. Anyways, this game has a ton of different graphics options, ranging all the way from a super high-powered system down to a very low-powered one, so it's awesome to see that developers are including such a broad spectrum for settings when it comes to multiple different computers playing their game. Fantastic. Obviously, very low is a bit low for most systems, so for that reason, low is probably where I would start if you're absolutely clawing for FPS and work your way up from there. Otherwise, medium is where I'd start instead, as the game still looks pretty alive, the shadows and things like that, that seem to disappear after we crank it down further. So, from 120-ish frames, let's start looking at all of the different settings. 3D resolution we've already mentioned with upscaling, however, if this is lowered with Add any kind of upscaling enabled, so DLSS or FSR, your game will render at a lower resolution, as it does here, but there isn't any AI magic cranking it all the way up to your native resolution, so things are going to look really bad. If you need to play it with your 3D resolution lowered, make sure that you enable either DLSS or FSR, depending on your hardware. If you're going to be playing at a native resolution, just make sure your 3D resolution is set to 100% and your upscaling is turned off as well. Having that, we've moved down to around 110 FPS. Shadows should have the biggest impact on performance. For the most part, between very high, we're sitting at 101, too high, medium, low, and off completely. That just doesn't really look good at all. We seem to gain maybe 20 to 30 frames. And if we leave it on low, which is as low as I would go, we move up to around 115-ish. So there's only really 10 to 15 frames difference here. Personally, most of the shadows seem to be present when the game is set too high, and we gain around 3 to 4 FPS, so this is where I'll be leaving it, but medium or even low is still a really good choice here. Then, anti-aliasing, if you choose to play at a native resolution, having this set to the higher options should help your game look quite a bit better when it comes to jagged edges. As for performance, on very high, I'm getting a solid 105-ish, 
down to completely off 108-ish, there's only really three frames difference here, and for the shimmering that it introduces when we have anti-aliasing turned off, I'd recommend keeping it on, at least on low, if you're not going to be playing with upscaling. If we are using upscaling, then I'd recommend putting your anti-aliasing on low, as having it set to off makes things look even worse. Having it set to anything higher when you're using upscaling, especially with low percentages here, shouldn't really have any kind of visual impact based on how much performance it'll use having higher anti-aliasing. So for the most part, low is where I'll be leaving it on native or upscaling performance modes. Then view distance. Obviously, you'd probably want to see further in this game just to add more to the immersion. On extra far, I'm sitting at 95-ish FPS, then far 96, medium around 100, though things have noticeably vanished, such as things down here in the river. So once again, this is high or far, and this is medium. Then there's near, so 104 FPS. And finally, very near that gets rid of quite a few different objects, pushes us around to 105-ish. Obviously, removing more details from the game is not necessarily something you always want to have. So having the set all the way down versus medium, for example, or even extremely far, seems to take away quite a bit from the immersion. For that reason, I'd probably be playing on far, if not extra far, just for better immersion in game, even if it costs me a few FPS here and there. Then, textures should really have to do with the amount of VRAM the game is consuming. Currently, it's using around 3.2 gigs. If we crank it up, it should use more memory, although it may not load immediately or may not even load until we restart the game. But as for performance, there should be almost no difference between the higher and lower options, especially if you have a ton of VRAM and a fast drive that this game is put on. So I'm getting 98-ish FPS down to very low, we're still at around 98, there's not really a difference here. For this reason, if you have anything more than 5 or 6 gigs of VRAM in your system, I'd recommend leaving it all the way up, otherwise you'll need to play around with it to find a number that works for you. Very high is good for most, if not all, systems. Then visual effects. Molly may think this only really has to do with fire particles and things like that, it's actually fog and quite a few other things. So we're setting at 96 on medium, high takes us down to 89-ish, very high, down to 86-ish, medium once more, 100, then low, still around 100, but we sacrifice a lot of visibility due to fog, and finally, very low, we sacrifice even more visibility for an extra maybe half to 1 FPS. I definitely wouldn't recommend having this option set anywhere lower than medium at minimum, but if you can, having it set to medium should give you good visuals and good performance as well. Anything above this seems to take away quite a bit of performance for not all that much impact. Something I have noticed is on high, there's a lot more swaying of trees, which isn't there on medium, and very high seems to even move the shadows of trees as well. Anyways, based on what you want out of the game, I'd recommend setting this to medium probably, but you can raise it if you want more better looking immersion. Then post-processing. I've set it all the way up to very high, we're getting a solid 95-ish FPS, high 95-ish still, medium 97-ish, low around 100, and very low around 103, 104-ish, but you can see a huge difference between low and high. This mostly has to do with vignetting, making the corners of the screen a little bit darker, and some general lighting, I would think. The low seems to add most of it back, and as I don't seem to lose all that much performance between low and medium, medium is probably where I'd be leaving this. Then finally, foliage quality. This you'd expect to have a big difference in performance between very high at 95-ish and very low at around 100. There's not all that much difference. We get way bigger performance impacts from other options. And of course, having this game set to higher options is probably going to result in a better looking game overall. So this is very low, very high, high, medium, and finally, low. Obviously, you'd want the game to feel more alive, and the best way to do that if you have extra performance lying around is by leaving it set up to very high. That's what I'll be doing here. And that's it. We've covered most of the options under the quality settings here. Then, scrolling down, we have motion blur, which I'd just generally recommend keeping off, and depth of field. If we look out over this valley here, you'll see things get super blurry really quickly. If we pause and turn off depth of field, it feels like we've put on glasses. This looks personally way better to me, in my opinion. Depth of field isn't something I'm usually a fan of in most games, but here it really does seem to make a big impact. 
Unless you're taking screenshots where you want the background to be blurry, I'd recommend leaving this off just so you have better visuals while you're playing the game. Then point light shadows will need to restart the game in order for it to take effect, which I'll do shortly. And of course, AMD FSR and DLSS that we've already covered. It seems like FSR has the ability to use the 3D resolution slider up here, but if we were to use DLSS instead, if you have an RTX graphics card, you can choose between the different options here. So performance, ultra performance, quality, and balance. And you can still technically mess around with the 3D resolution option, but it should automatically be done for you down here. So if you're going to be using DLSS, just make sure your 3D resolution is set to 100% all of the time. That's it. All right. So with our options set as such in our optimized state, let's quickly restart to get performance. Then once more to see the difference between point light shadows. So around 100 frames, we've come back into the game and it's raining. Uh, let's restart once more, but we've still at a solid 90-ish frame anyways. Okay, well, assuming that that world was stuck in an indefinite state of raining, I've moved into a new one and we're still at around 100 FPS. Let's see what turning on point light shadows does to the game. So I'll confirm it and we'll need to restart. And it seems I've been cursed with rain here too. Fantastic. Okay, well, anyways, we're still sitting at 100. Let's try our other world. And the indefinite rain has lifted. Fantastic. We're now setting at a solid 90. Nope, still around 100. And there doesn't seem to be that much difference when it comes to visuals around the world. As for having this on or off, I think just probably leave it off. That's the default state. You can turn it on. I don't see much of a difference in performance and how the game looks anyways. One final thing, when you start up the game, you're asked if you'd like it DirectX 11 or 12. Which should you choose? Well, now that we've run through the entire optimization using DirectX 11, I've now switched to DirectX 12 and performance is noticeably lower at around 90, 80 ish even. And I think our settings are pretty much around the same. Yep, they seem to be. The difference between DirectX 11 and 12 is while 12 seems to have moodier lighting, so probably a slightly different lighting engine, and it comes with a bigger performance cost. As for which one you should choose, I'd probably say just stick with 11 for now. Anyway, that's really it for this complete guide on breaking down all the different graphics options in this game. Hopefully you have a better understanding on how to get more performance out of your system and even how to make the game look quite a bit better with a few of the options that we've run through. If you'd like to know how to play with other people as and hosting your own dedicated server completely for free that stays up 24 7 or as long as you leave it open check the description down below for a dedicated hosting server guide thank you for watching my sweet troubleshoot and i'll see you all next time ciao and a special thank you to superior emerald for being an ultimate supporter